The poet says love makes the world go round. That may not be technically accurate, but love at least makes the world a more interesting place while it's spinning. Now, love's a lot of things. Flowers, sweet music, and soft lights and champagne. Champagne is the drink of lovers. Only problem is, champagne is tricky. You never know how it's going to affect you. Like my friend Pete Daly. When he drank champagne, well, he forgot things. And when he forgot things, it caused trouble. And trouble is something that flat follows me around. Ordinarily, I manage to keep away from trouble, especially other people. I got a great affection for the quiet corners and the thoughtful way of life. Besides, involvement in other people's troubles interferes with my looking for Charlie Bent. Now, that's the fellow who framed me into a couple of years in prison. Sometimes I can't seem to avoid involvement, especially if there's an old friend concerned. And even more especially if I'm in my usual economic predicament, which is flat and broke. That's how I got all mixed up with Pete Daly, champagne, pint-sized female with a whim of iron, and a certain lapse of memory which just about made me settle down in a Colorado cow town as a permanent resident of Boot Hill. <laughs> Good to see you. Destro, you gotta protect me. From what? Will you? Well, now, Pete, if I were in your place, I'm not exactly the kind of fellow I'd want protecting mm -hmm. me. Well, don't forget, Destro, we've been friends for years. Right, Pete, all right, but protect you from what? From J.P. Crane. What's dangerous about him? She's a girl. She wants to marry me. Well, just tell her, no thanks. But I got another dreadful problem. Well, what's that, Pete? I love her. Especially if that includes putting away large quantities of champagne. And when Pete drinks champagne, things start getting fuzzy. I remember once he started champagneing in St. Louis. The next thing he knew, he was falling out of bed in a hotel that was in Denver. And that was two weeks later. I knew that if I wanted to hear what Pete had in mind, I had to catch him before he started on the second bottle. Well, now, fill me in on this so-called special problem. You 
think it's a so-called problem, huh? You know what that is? A thousand dollars. If you can protect me from getting married the few days I'm here, I'll give you the other half. I knew you were doing good, but a thousand dollars. That's nothing what I stand to make on this deal. That's why I'm here. But I'm taking an awful chance just being here. On the other hand, I stand to lose a fortune if I'm not. You understand, Pete? Uh, what do you mean you're taking an awful chance? Ever since we were kids, J.P.'s been swearing she'd marry me. Lately, I uh, felt I had a kind of a weakness. Uh, every once in a while, I find myself wanting to marry her. You know what that would mean. Have to stay neat and clean. Yeah. Behave yourself. Go home nights. Never be free. I'll do it. I knew I could count on it, No question I could use a thousand dollars. Most people can. Well, I have trouble working steady. Physical ailment or just disinclined? I'm still chasing after that fellow that framed me. Charlie Bent. Life I heard he was down in Mexico someplace. Take some money to get there. So I'll do the very best job I can for you, Pete. Especially seems we're old friends and all. Where is she? In my hotel suite. I was hoping I'd get into town without her knowing about it desperately. Somehow she found out and she's waiting for me in my hotel suite. And I'm scared. Destry, you gotta stop me. If you see me weakening, hit me. Do anything short of shoot me, but stop me. I don't have to do that, Pete. I'll just go up and get rid of her for you. Could you do that without hurting her feelings? You just give me 10 minutes. Then come on up. I'll be waiting for you. Alone. I sure appreciate this, Jeffrey. You know, since you brought in the champagne last year, I've been doing uh, some inquiry. Yeah. And I've heard that this stuff is not quite as innocent as you keep saying it is. You're joking. No. Some people claim that at a certain point, it has a pronounced effect. I can drink this stuff all day and all night. I'm not Pete. I'm his best friend, Destry. Oh, how nice. Well, make yourself at home, Mr. Destry. Well, thank you. I mean, no thank you. I've, I've come here on, on Pete's behalf. Seems there's been some talk about, uh, about marriage. Oh, Pete's been talking about it, too? No. Well, I mean, uh, he's very fond of you, but, uh, well, well, he's too busy to get married. And, uh, well, he likes being a bachelor. I believe in being honest and firm about these things. It's so nice to meet any friend of Pete's, Mr. Destry. Well, it's your pleasure to meet you. Did, did you hear what I said? Oh, of course. You were just being honest and firm. That's right, honest and firm. Um, I've come about a very serious business. Tell me. How long did you tell Pete to wait before he came up? How'd you know about that? Oh, girls just know these things. You think Pete will like my riding habit? Uh, he'd be a fool not to. Of course, it's a little creased from the trip, but I'll have it pressed before the ride back to Pete's ranch. Uh, you don't think this is too much on it? Oh, no, I don't think that's too much. Oh, there's something about it you don't like. Oh, well, it's, uh... It could be a little, uh, little higher. Higher? Uh oh, something. Now look, I, I got to be honest and firm. Uh, about... Tell me how much higher. Well, well, right about there. That. Well, you got such a nice little waist. Uh, well, uh, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to detract from it, anyway. <laughs> Oh, 
Did you uh, get a nice room, J.P.? Well, Pete, she didn't have time, so I... Uh... Well, your friend Mr. Destry suggested I take your suite. Wasn't that thoughtful of him? Oh, it sure was. Uh, Destry's always been very thoughtful. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I thought you could share the room with me. Uh, my room. You got a nice big bed. Thank you, Destry. And I told her about that business meeting we have. In fact, I think we're late already. Oh, well, don't let me interfere. You two just run along and, uh... I'll, uh, I'll fix you some dinner tomorrow night, all right? Bye. I don't think you're being too much help, Mr. I'm sorry, Pete. I'm doing the best I can, but I gotta admit, you have a problem. Pete carried on the minute we got back to the birdcage. I could tell that this was going to be one of those wild, noisy nights. The kind that always managed to end up with Destry in trouble. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy everybody a drink. I'd like to make, I'd like to make a toast. I might have been married by now, but I was saved. Hi. Hi. I was rescued by the man standing at my side. To the loyalest, smartest, bravest man I know, to my best friend, Destry! Yeah. Danny can the old Tom Destry. He used to be a lawman. He is old Tom's only living flesh and blood, his very own son. Your pa was a mighty tough lawman. Well, I actually, I kind of take after my mother. Don't you believe him? He's every bit the man his dad was. Now, Pete, you know that's not true. I wanted to be a school teacher. I wasn't smart enough. So you're old Tom Destry's kid. Wouldn't you fellas like a drink? The old man put us in jail one time for five years. Five years? Five years. Well, well didn't you get time off for good behavior? We did the whole five. The whole five? Uh, well, well, I sure am glad to see you out. I mean, bygones and all that. Now, what kind of a drink would you like? If Destry was a lawman, he could put the four of you in jail with one hand tied behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pete, uh, he's got a very funny sense of humor. <laughs> you want to bet he can do that? You bet I'll bet. <laughs> put your dollar up, mister. You're covered. Show him, Destry. Now, wait a minute. You think you're pretty tough because you flattened Joe, huh? No, that was an accident. more confidence in yourself, Destry. I was sure you could do it. Quit four big men at once? Well, I, I hate to tell you this, but your pa did. Mm. There's something I want you to know, Destry, after losing that bet. What? I like you anyway.
thought you said you had a big bed. I was protecting you. Didn't want me to leave you someplace where she might find you alone, did you? Yeah, I'm right. Where are you going to sleep? Right there. On that bed. That is where I'm going to sleep. You're my employee. The employer sleeps on the bed. You're paying me to protect you? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm beginning to think I'm being underpaid. There. I believe that every man who likes champagne should always have all of it he wants. Didn't I tell you, Destry, how nice she was? Oh, no, 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 please. No, I don't believe in men doing all those things for women. I think the women should do them for the men instead. After all, if a woman loves a man, it's her privilege to do everything for him. See, Destry? Oh, yeah. I hope you like the food. If you don't, I can make something else. It is wonderful, J.P. It's just wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it sure is good. It's fine. I just love to cook for Pete. He's such a big, strong, husky man, and food's very important to him. Well, it's, it's fairly important to most of us. <laughs> Did you have a good day today, Pete? Real good. Real good. Another couple of days, I'll have the deal all locked up. Oh, Pete's always had such a fantastic business head. Well, he understands everything about all those complicated things that are just confusing to me. Oh. Well, now, Pete was telling me that you build up a 40,000-acre ranch. Yes. Oh, but sometimes it gets to be so much for me. I need a man's advice so much that... Sometimes I feel just like sitting down and crying. Oh, honey, I didn't... I didn't know you felt like crying sometimes. I feel like crying myself sometimes, Pete. Like now, for instance. Oh, we're out of champagne. Gee, I, I thought I brought a lot more here. I got some under the bar at the birdcage. Oh, well, I'm sure Mr. Destry wouldn't mind getting some for us. Would you, Mr. Destry? Well, I... I'm really... Oh, sure, Destry will go. After all, Destry, my girl and I haven't had a chance to talk together. Well, I don't think really we need any... Well, yeah, I'll, uh... I'll go get some. Excuse me. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Destry. Take your time. There's no rush. No, uh... to hurry. Pete was already getting glassy-eyed, and if she had him to herself for five minutes, Pete would wake up tomorrow a married man and not remember a thing about it. Oh, this is a bottle I must have overlooked. Great, I'll have a drop or two. Uh, it sure is nice just sitting here with you, J.P. Well, I'm so glad you feel that way, Pete. I, uh, I don't think Mr. Destry approves of me. Anybody would. Just so you do. I always told you that sooner or later we'd be married. Mm-hmm. There comes a time in a man's life when he... when he becomes aware that the only truly mature and beautiful thing to do is to join hands with a girl he loves and settle down in a charming home and have children and security. Uh-huh. Daly, the cow. Oh, hello, fellas. Oh, oh, I, oh, I see you got her head. I'm sorry. 
You know, the only real problem you have is that you're so shy. Otherwise, you'd have asked me a long time ago, Daddy. Mm. Now, tell me, darling. Isn't this better than a life of carousing and going with girls who really don't mean anything to you? Well, uh... Wouldn't you just love to be together like this every night? Well... You know you're going to ask me now. So go ahead. Well, you're back so fast. You must have uh, run all the way. Oh, no, no. It's just those climbing those stairs get me. Anything interesting happened while I was gone? Oh, you had a nice little chat, a real nice one. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll, I'll open this up. Might spot a little, because I might have jiggled it a little bit while I was walking back. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's, uh, no, it's all oh. right. I'll just, I'll go change. Well, I'm sure sorry. Oh. oh. You didn't ask her to marry me? Yeah. No. Oh. When she comes out, I'm going to. You can't. Oh, I've made up my mind. I'm going to marry that little girl. Doing this for both our good? Oh. Can't you understand that tree? There comes a time in a man's life when he becomes aware that the only truly mature and beautiful the oh, beautiful thing to do is to join hands with the girl he loves and settle down in a charming home and have children and security. Oh. You're hysterical. Ah. I am not. My only problem is that I'm Sometime during the night, the other Pete Daly, the one fueled by champagne, sneaked out of bed, leaving behind his memory, his willpower, and his good sense. If he'd fallen down and broken his legs, we'd both have been better off. But it just wasn't our lucky night. I've been betrayed by my best friend. A destry. He beat me up to keep me from marrying the girl I love. What a rotten trick. Why, why, what do you expect from a skunk like that? It looks to me like if a fellow wants to get married, his best friend ought to let him. What a rotten way to act. Ain't none of his business. And I like the idea of marriage. I want to get married. There comes a time in a man's life when he becomes
truly mature, aware, and beautiful. Settle down in a charming security home. I never heard it put nicer. I think everybody ought to get married. Plenty of time. I like you, fellas. I'd like to buy you a drink. Oh, we'd like you, too. All right. I got an idea. for each of you. And if you promise to do what I ask you, I'll have you another half in a couple of days. You want us to kill Destry? Oh, no. After all, he was my friend. Once. Well, that's nice of you. Uh, you may have to get rid of him temporarily for a couple of days. He's so stubborn. But the way you can earn the rest of the money is to guarantee me that in the next couple of days, you get me married. Huh. Mister, you got yourself a deal. get a roommate that does an imitation of Niagara Falls. What I did for you last night, you ought to be eternally indebted to me. What did, what did you do? I don't remember too much about last night. I beat you up. Beat you up to keep you from getting married. You did? What a friend. What? Was I really going to do that? Sure were. Had to knock you cold. Carry you down two flights of stairs. Destry, tonight you can have the bed. Huh, it's mighty generous of you. I mean, it's my own bed. Thanks for the honor. Hurry up. Gotta go get some breakfast. <laughs> All set. Don't worry about a thing. That fella say something to you? Yeah, he said something about uh, don't worry about anything. Well, actually, that was kind of a cheerful thing to say. Yeah, it was when you think about it. I guess there's some niceness in everybody. Yep, ought to be able to finish up my business and get out of here by tomorrow morning. Well, that'll be a relief. I think I'll leave town myself. I'm getting in too many fights around here recently. Now, I'm not much for fancy words, Jeffrey, but I'll never be able to thank you enough for sticking by me the way you have. <laughs> That's what friends are for, Pete. Say, uh, you haven't lost that half of the thousand dollar bill, have you? Oh, no, it's right here. I'm going to go and see if my horse is there. Yeah, I think I'm going to go see what time I can get a stage out of here in the morning. care things for you. Uh, yeah, see, what we plan to do is tie him and put him up in the law for a couple of days. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs>
nobody is going to put no friend of mine and no law for no couple deaths. You all must be out of your minds. seem to be cooperating very much, does he? I thought he was trying to back out on the deal. He seemed like an honest fella. Maybe he just didn't like uh, loss or something like that. Well, it's very hard to figure. He sure didn't seem to want our help. Remember he kept complaining about not getting married to anybody because he was too shy? Maybe that's his problem. Yeah. Maybe we ought to change our plan, taking into account he's being so shy and all. Well, one way or the other, that boy's gonna get married. That's a pretty big deal. Yep. Selling 10,000 cows. Well, you see why I had to be here. All I have to do now is drop the papers, huh? Yes, sir. And I'll get out of town tomorrow morning. Pete. I've been thinking. Some mighty funny things going on around here. It could be much better for us if we just barricaded ourselves in my hotel room until then. You think so? Somehow I think it'd be a whole lot safer. All right. Your advice has been real good so far. Another 15 or 20 hours of this would get kind of dull. Better dull than dangerous, I always say. Looks like I could at least have a glass or two of champagne. No. Yeah. You know what almost happened to you the last time I went out to get you some of that stuff. I'd be here all by myself. I'd lock myself in the room till you came back. What could happen? Maybe nothing to you. What about me? I might run into those four crazy fellas tried to tie me up, put me in a loft this morning. Just be careful. After all, there's law and order in this town. The sheriff is upstate. Give your hand. If you don't go get me some champagne, I might just get so bored, I might just break out of here and go get married. And it would cost you your thousands. You're blackmailing me. Sure I am. I'm thirsty. All right. But if you want to know my honest opinion, you lack moral fiber. Lock the door. Bring back a lot of it. all day. Well, where's my rug? What are you talking about? 
Who else would want Pete? You know, you shouldn't worry about Pete every time he's not with you for ten minutes. Oh, yes, I should. I'm not after your friend, Mr. Destry. Really, I'm not. And if you'll come and discuss it with me after you found Pete, I'll tell you why I've decided never to marry Thanks, him. All right. Hey, mister, did you see some fellas go by here with a rug? Yeah. Well, when? Oh, um, that was a couple of minutes ago. Well, 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 was it a big rug? Oh, it was a... Middle-sized, I'd say. Oh. Uh, one funny thing. What? It was a awful, uh, uh, lumpy sort of rug. Which way did they go? They went that way. Thanks. That's the bridegroom. Oh. But, uh... Ain't you never seen a bridegroom before? Well, yes. But I never saw one arrive like this. Yeah, well, he wants to get married, but, uh, he, he don't quite know how to go about it, you see. He's kind of shy. Now, we're his friends. We'll be witnesses or, or whatever you need. But he himself has to say, I do. Hey, did you see a rug with some fellas going by here? Some, uh, men with a rug? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I think I remember some men with a rug. Well, which way did they go? I think they went that way. Thanks. Okay, boss, here you are. Everything's fine. You can get married to Marie here. How do you do, Marie? I don't want to get married. No offense, ma'am. You don't want to. No. We're getting mighty tired of you being so shy. What are you all talking about? No more fooling around. Let's get on with this wedding. Uh, I don't think I can perform the ceremony with you holding the guns on the bridegroom. Yeah, I, I, th I think he's right, fellas. We told you he's shy. Now go ahead. Uh, we are gathered here today in peace and harmony to uh, witness the sacred rite of holy matrimony. Do you, Miss Marie Harris, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? Yes, I do. And do you, Mr. Pete Daly, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? No. You better take her. Hold it, you're coming. I'll put those things away. Now, you stay out of this. You're not on his side like we are. On my side? Get behind me, Pete. That's true. These fellas were trying to marry me. That's what it looked like. Well, that's what he wants. This ain't fair. He owes us half of four hundred dollars. What for? For getting you married. You gave us four halves of hundred dollar bills to do the job. Pete? That's a big lie. Otherwise, I'd have four half a hundred dollar bills, which I haven't. Come on. I can't imagine what's got into those madmen, Dusty. Yeah. Try to tell us you want to get married. Guess you must have thought Jay Pete kidnapped me at first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, she said something about. Not wanting to marry anymore. Well, that'd be too good to be true. Yeah. Said something about wanting to explain it to me. Well, then go and let her explain. Hurry up. Come on. Oh, all right. Just two things. Go easy on that stuff while I'm gone. And don't let anybody else in the room. Right. Your old friend Destry is the only person that's safe for you to see or talk to while right. you're in town. Right. I won't see or talk to anybody but you, old friend. When I come back, 
password will be uh, bachelorhood. Good password. Thank you. Uh, you said something to me about explaining... Oh, yes. But first sit down, make yourself comfortable. Well, thank you. Would you care for some more ice? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, sure. You'll have just a glass with me. You'll do that for me, won't you? Well, all right. But... Are you were going to tell me... Oh, I know. I will. Here. What do you think of me, Mr. Destry? Honestly. Honestly? Yes. Well, I can see why you have such an effect on Pete. Why? Well, you're beautiful and, uh, and you're smart. And, uh... <laughs> and I'm made out of steel. <laughs> yeah, and that's a pretty good grade of steel. Well, I always get what I want. Whether it takes a day or ten years. You do. Now, I'll tell you why Pete doesn't have anything to worry about anymore. Yes? I'm a very forthright woman, Mr. Destry. And I've decided that I'm going to marry you instead. <laughs> oh, well, you're joking. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, I'm no good. Oh, but I think you are. No, I'm poor. Uh, Pete's rich. Oh, a woman who wants a man doesn't care about money. Well, I do terrible things sometimes. I... Well, I, I lie and I gamble and, and, and I carry on something awful. You just have a lot of spirit, and I think that's wonderful. Well, uh, I'm leaving town tomorrow. Well, now, Pete left town about ten years ago when he was a boy, did uh, that stop me? Well, I guess it didn't, did it? No matter when it happens, and it will. Here's to our marriage, Mr. Destry. Oh, no, you're making an awful mistake. I mean, if I was a girl, uh, I'd be the last fellow in the world I'd want to tie up with. But I am a girl, and I don't agree. I still think you're joking with me. Oh, well, you'll find out in time. Wouldn't you consider taking Pete back? No. But he's such a wonderful fella. So are you. Oh, but he's the most lovable fella I ever met. I, he'd make a fine husband. I'm not interested in him anymore. After chasing him all those years? Oh, woman has got to change him up. I see. Change your mind. You'll excuse me. Uh, I have to do something. Mr. Destry? Hmm? You want to know something, Mr. Destry? Yes. You haven't got a chance. Yes. Who's there? Really, she was just trying to get my good side. <laughs> my chance of that. And you're the only one I'll see or talk to all night, right? Hey, how about having a little champagne to celebrate? But uh, you, you thought I ought to go easy on this. Yeah, what could be safer? You're locked in here with me, aren't you? As usual, old friend, you're right. <laughs> Go up and say goodbye to J.P. Who? J.P. Oh. That darling girl. You a darling girl. She's a darling girl. Maybe I ought to go up and say goodbye to her. Maybe you should. Good idea. After all, there's a... You're right. Absolutely right. Beg your pardon? What you were going to say? That's right. Oh. What was that? That there comes a time in a man's life 
when the only truly mature and beautiful thing for him to do is join hands with a girl he loves. Is that you, Dusty? I'm only telling you what you told me. There's a lot of truth in it. You're darn right there is. A fellow ought to settle down in a charming home with children and security. It's a beautiful thought, Pete. Beautiful. Chokes me up. Really does? Brings a lump to my throat. I wish I had a girl like J.P. She's the most beautiful, sweetest, nicest girl in the world. Yeah. Nicest girl you've ever known. You bet. That's right. You bet. Yeah, but... You wouldn't marry her. Who says I wouldn't? You mean you want to? Yeah. More or less. Yeah. You're right, Destry. No more gambling and foolish stuff like that, carousement, being a no good like you. That's right. This could be the beginning of a new life for me. Unless she doesn't accept me. Will you marry me? Yes. You made me the happiest man in the world. Me too. Why not do it right now? I'll go wake the justice of the peace. He's waiting up for it. Evening. Well. You make a lovely couple. Uh, him. I thought you said you didn't want to get married. Different girl. Oh. We are gathered here tonight in peace and harmony to join together in holy matrimony. Hey, in there. Yes, street. Those fellas again. What do they want now? I don't know. I'll go talk to them. We're gathered here tonight in peace and harmony. <laughs> they don't seem to want to talk. We've got to get out that door before J.P. gets hurt. All right. Come on. wine at a time like this. Congratulations, Pete. Here's my half of a thousand. Wedding present. Destry, you've been through a lot. You take my half instead. Thank you. That's a lovely wedding present, Mr. Destry. Isn't it, Peter? Yes, dear. Would you take me home now, Peter? I'm really very tired. Yes, dear. Straighten your tie, darling. Always ball at wedding? Well, I can't help it. I feel so sorry for him. Oh. 
this way. Death 